This video is sponsored by Audible. What is going on everyone? My name is Jason and this is the iPhone 13 Pro Max versus the Pixel 6 Pro. What is going on everyone? Jason here and today we're doing a comparison of two of the biggest phones available going into this holiday season. And I'm speaking figuratively and literally here as these are no joke huge devices. In the red corner, we have the ultra luxurious Apple iPhone 13 Pro Max, one of the most premier smartphones in the game today. And in the blue corner, we have the newcomer that has been making a lot of noise, the completely revamped Google Pixel 6 Pro. Now I ran a survey on my YouTube community tab to see which two phones you were most interested to see go head to head. And these were the ones that you chose. So today I'm gonna to be doing a side-by-side -side comparison of these devices to ultimately help determine which one is better. Now, before we jump into the review, in case you're new here, I'm Jason. I would really appreciate it if you give this video a thumbs up. It really does help out solo creators like myself get a little bit more traction on their videos, so please help me out. And in case you're a tech junkie like me, don't forget to subscribe to the channel so you can stay up to date with all the reviews. And before I get into it, which team are you on? Team Pixel or Team Apple? Try and keep it civil down there. Let me know what you guys are thinking in the comments down below. Okay, first, let's talk about design in relation to comfort, and let's start with the new Pixel 6 Pro. First and foremost, this is a really big phone. It's the largest Pixel Google has ever made, but the nice thing about the size is that it's not uncomfortable to hold or operate. The phone's width is accommodating to the palm, and the round edges on the frame make it easier to grip, even over extended periods of time. Now the iPhone 13 Pro Max, though it does have the same display size as the Pixel 6 Pro, you can see that the phone is a bit wider. This actually makes it more cumbersome to hold, especially when you pair in the completely sharp edges on the phone's frame. Don't get me wrong, aesthetically I love this industrial look, but with a phone this wide, you do have to grip harder and it can start to get uncomfortable. Now a major factor that goes into how comfortable these phones are going to be is the weight of the phones, and the iPhone is noticeably heavier. The added mass no doubt makes the phone feel more substantial in the hand, but it also serves to exacerbate the discomfort mentioned earlier. Overall, if you're looking for the more comfortable device, the Pixel 6 Pro is a clear win for me here. It's a fantastic balance between having a device that can give you an ultra immersive user experience without it becoming unwieldy to operate and use. Now, when it comes to build quality and aesthetics, both phones share some common flagship characteristics. They both have a glass on glass design, connected together by metal frames. There are some key differences with the material, however. While the Pixel 6 Pro uses a glass panel with a glossy finish, the iPhones is frosted, it's going to come down to preference, but I like the frosted panel better. It's way more fingerprint resistant, and the satin sheen it's able to give off when reflected in the light does make it look a lot more refined. Apple also uses higher-end stainless steel, which, call me a snob, does feel better in the hand. And though the metal on the Pixel frame is nice, no doubt Apple is using the more premium build materials here. When it comes to look, both are pretty stunning phones, and it's hard to pick one over the other. I do like how the display on the Pixel 6 Pro is more immersive, the minimal hole punch cutout for the front facing camera and the slightly curved edges does make the device look super clean. Plus, the Pixel went a pretty bold direction with the camera housing. This ledge design is unique and I ultimately think it looks nice. I like how it keeps the back of the phone symmetrical and it makes it stand out in a good way. So at the end of the day, I think the Pixel 6 Pro looks nicer, but you do have to give it to the 13 Pro Max when it comes to overall build quality with its higher end material. Now before we get into comparing the displays of both the Pixel 6 Pro and the iPhone 13 Pro Max, I want to give a huge shout out to today's video sponsor, Audible. Audible is truly an amazing platform that has the largest selection of audiobooks on the planet, ranging from bestsellers and new releases, to celebrity memoirs and a ton more. And what's awesome about it is that as an Audible member, you get one credit every month which is good for any title within their premium selection of audiobooks, which you can keep forever in your personal Audible library. In addition, you also get access to Audible's Plus catalog that has thousands of select audiobooks, podcasts, Audible originals, guided meditation, fitness programs, etc., all which are included in your membership, so you can download and stream as much as you want with no additional credits needed. I've been a huge fan of Audible for some time now. It's completely changed how I manage my commute as I don't mind being stuck in traffic nearly as much as I did in the past. I'm currently listening to the audiobook Shoe Dog. It's a memoir of the co-creator of Nike, Phil Knight, and it's absolutely phenomenal. It's such an engaging and motivating story of how one of the most iconic brands in the world came to be. I mean, Nike has had such an influence on sports and society as a whole. It's been so inspiring learning about its origins and how it became the powerhouse that it is today. And with so many amazing audio titles like this one available, getting a membership to Audible really is one of the best gifts that you can give yourself and or others this holiday season. And right now, for a limited time, you can save 60% off your first three months of Audible. That comes out to only $5.95 a month, which is a crazy bargain. Just use the link in the description below or go to audible.com jsl 
or text JSL to 500-500 to take advantage of this incredible deal. Give yourself the gift of listening. Check out Audible today. Now, one of the biggest components that's going to go into making a decision on what phone is right for you is going to be the display. And let's start off with the Pixel 6 Pro. It's rocking a mammoth 6.7 inch QHD OLED panel, coming in with a resolution of 3120 by 1440 with the variable 120 Hz refresh rate. And it's an absolutely gorgeous display. Content comes off sharp, colors are saturated, and navigating around the UI is silky smooth with its high refresh rate. No doubt what sets this display apart from the iPhones is the immersiveness. Again, because the slightly curved edges and the lack of a notch, and basically no forehead and chin, this is as full screen as you're gonna get. And because it's so big, content consumption on this phone is super enjoyable. Now I recognize that curved edges is not everyone's cup of tea. The good news is, is that it's not like the old Samsung Galaxy phones where you would constantly get those accidental punches on the screen because the curve was so deep. I haven't had any issues like that happen. But if a flat screen is more your jam, you're likely not gonna find one better than what's on the iPhone 13 Pro Max. It's flexing a gigantic 6.7 inch Super Retina XDR OLED display, coming in with a resolution of 2778 by 1284, with its ProMotion 120Hz variable refresh rate, and it's also a force to be reckoned with. This has gotta be one of the best panels out there when it comes to symmetry of its bezel. It's essentially uniform around the display's circumference, and it's pretty minimal. Scrolling through apps and the UI animations are noticeably smoother with the ProMotion technology. The screen can also get crazy bright, and when compared side by side with the pixels, you can see that the iPhone's display focuses on lifting the shadows a bit more for that balanced look, while the pixels focuses on contrast. It's gonna come down to preference which style you like better, but you can see that both do outstanding here. And yes, the iPhone does have the notch at the top, and even though it is smaller than previous iPhone iterations, the reduction isn't noticeable and doesn't in any way mask the existence of the notch itself. That said, this is an issue to me that is blown way out of proportion when talking about the phone's cons. You really don't notice and or care about the notch as soon as you start actually using the device. And I've always been in the camp that gladly welcomes the notch because it means I get access to Apple's biometric security system, Face ID. Yes, it's not anything new, but I still contend that Face ID is the most reliable, secure, and least intrusive security measure on any device. It's easy to set up, and majority of the time you don't even remember that you have a security system in place. It's that well integrated into the user experience. Now, the Pixel 6 Pro has an in-display fingerprint reader as a biometric security measure. It's nice that they finally shifted away from the external fingerprint readers that they've been using for a super long time. But first, it's an optical sensor, so it's not the most secure system out there. And given where this technology is at, it really should be faster at authenticating. It's not the end of the world and it's a pretty decent system, but Face ID is without question a more robust and sophisticated security system. Now when it comes to performance, again both phones do very well and kind of unique here, they're both equipped with their own homegrown chips. Google debuted its Tensor chip with the Pixel 6 Pro, which is a very welcome change from using clear mid-tier Snapdragon chips like it's done in the past. Everything on this phone runs super fast, gaming is no problem, but the main areas in which Tensor is leveraged on this phone in my opinion is in some of the more nuanced features. For example, the Google Translate app is pretty mind-blowing as it can transcribe audio to text and almost instantaneously and accurately translate it to another language. It also has cool features like Magic Eraser, which allows users to remove unwanted parts of a photo, and I have to say it works a lot better than expected. Now the iPhone 13 Pro Max is equipped with Apple's A15 Bionic chip. It's a beastly processor that is likely the most powerful on the market. Everything runs crazy fast. Spec intensive gaming is a breeze. And the iPhone has got some fun tricks up its sleeve as well. Cinematic mode kind of acts like a portrait mode for video. It's kind of gimmicky, but no doubt quite a flex for the A15 Bionic as it takes a ton of processing power for a video like this to be captured live. Now, one of the more important and kind of overlooked areas of performance that I think more people need to take into consideration is battery life. The Pixel 6 Pro is rocking a 5,000 mAh battery that supports fast charging, wireless charging, and reverse charging, which is great, but the battery performance overall is just good. Definitely not the best in comparison to the top competition, and I was expecting better given the size of the battery, but I usually only average around 6 hours of screen on time, which is kind of disappointing. The iPhone 30 Pro Max, on the other hand, doesn't have as large of a battery, but man, it completely crushes it with battery life. I have yet to get through a full charge in one day, and I've been easily managing around 8 hours of screen on time, which really speaks to the efficiency this phone is able to accomplish. Now, the last area of comparison I want to focus on from a performance standpoint is the camera quality. Google and Apple have been battling it out for the top spot in the smartphone camera performance race for some time now, and trust me, both parties are not holding back with their newest offerings. And when it comes to still image photography, 
You can see that the pixel lifts the shadows more, which provides more of that dramatic HDR type of look, while the iPhone 13 Pro Max keeps some of the shadows to preserve some of the details for a more contrasty look. I do prefer the picture profile of the iPhone a bit better. It's more consistent and natural looking, as sometimes the image coming out of the pixel, in my opinion, is way overprocessed. When it comes to selfies, it's kind of the opposite from the cameras on the back. The pixel provides a more contrast-centric image, while the iPhone tends to brighten up the skin tones for a more even look. I do think that the iPhone does better with skin tones overall, but I will admit it's likely more artificial, as they're doing something to make it more flattering to the eye. Now when it comes to video, the both phones can shoot some pretty impressive 4K footage. To me, there's a clear winner here. Don't get me wrong, the 4K video coming out of the Pixel 6 Pro isn't bad, and it's a pretty decent improvement from Pixels of the past, especially around its colors and dynamic range. But honestly, no one in the smartphone game is getting close to the video that the new iPhones are able to produce. The 4K video is tack sharp, the dynamic range is stellar, and the quality here is just so good, it's kind of unbelievable that it's coming from a phone. And when you factor all that in, when it comes to overall camera performance, I do give the edge to the iPhone 13 Pro Max. It's in my opinion the best camera system in any phone right now, given how well it performs on all levels. So at the end of the day, even though it may seem like the iPhone may be the better phone overall, there's one more very important comparison we have to look at, and that's the price. As shiny and nice as the iPhone 13 Pro Max is, it behooves you to keep in mind that the base model for this phone comes in with a wallet-crushing price tag of $1,099. This makes it one of the most expensive phones available in the consumer market today, and it could be argued that that's a lot to ask for considering what the phone has to offer. That's especially the case when looking at the price tag for the Pixel 6 Pro, which offers a pretty comparable user experience. The base model is only $899, which is still kind of expensive, don't get me wrong, but significantly more accessible financially when compared to the iPhone. And given the price difference, in my opinion, I'd say that the Pixel 6 Pro is the overall better value. You're getting an incredible phone at that price that does a ton of things right. It's probably one of the best value flagship phones available in 2021. And even though I would say that the iPhone 13 Pro Max is likely the better overall phone, man, it comes at such a steep cost. Honestly, when it comes to price comparison between these two, I think the regular iPhone 13 Pro is the better choice if you're dead set on getting an iPhone. It's only $100 more expensive than the Pixel 6 Pro, gives you all the same features the Max model does, and personally, I think it's more comfortable for most people to use. Either way, the good news here is that you're not going to be disappointed with whatever you end up going with, as both of these phones are incredible, so let me know what you guys think. Would you end up going with the newly designed Pixel 6 Pro, or the ultra-posh iPhone 13 Pro Max? Let me know what you guys are thinking in the comments down below. Okay, that's about it for this review. Don't forget to leave me a thumbs up, again, I'd really appreciate it. Check out these other reviews if you're looking for more, and I'll see you guys in the next one.